Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how to heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is Maz Sajadi. Maz Sajadi is the founder of Exponential Intelligence, Metamorphosis, and Metam Healing. You can find out more about Maz Sajadi and his wonderful work at Maz, that's M-A-S dash S-A-J-A-D-Y dot com. Welcome, Maz Sajadi. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks for having me on. Now, Maz, you've had not just one, but two near-death experiences. According to the IANDS, there seem to be about over 700 near-death experiences in the U.S. every day. How do you think the increasing number of near-death experiencing experiences is are affecting our collective consciousness? Well, if uh, it's just a, the near-death experiences is really a magnifier. So if you're really say an awakened being, uh, those near-death experiences will help us awaken faster. You know, the, on the collective consciousness. Uh, and then if you're not, say, that awakened, unfortunately, what happens is that, well, it kind of degrades the cl- collective consciousness because a lot of people, like uh, even today, uh, what happens is that, you know, they have a near death and then, you know, um, they have suicidal thoughts, you know, they don't want to be here. So again, those are all, say, situations where that individual wasn't awakened. So it, it really depends on if you're awakened or not. Uh, it'll... If you're an awakened being, you have a collective consciousness, it takes you higher. And if you're not an awakened being, uh, it'll bring that consciousness a a bit lower. Now, you've studied near-death experiences as well as quantum physics. What are the underlying principles of quantum physics that help us to understand or explain what a person actually goes through when they experience a near-death experience? Well, I I equate it to the quantum physics because, you know, the way I see it or what I call the body of knowledge that I tap into, which is exponential intelligence. uh, And by the way, I didn't create it. I just dubbed that name to it. Um, it, You know, there's a timeless knowledge and then a time bound knowledge. Um, So very, very similar to quantum physics. You know, there's a, a timeless, say, force. Uh, that say creates on uh, that affects particles so so through quantum physics or you know near-death experience it's all really the same you have a timeless being your what you might call your spirit um, say uh, creating a, a time-bound being which would we call uh, our human body and the experiences that we have with that human body now, when you look at a person, um, how do you see their frequency? What is it a knowing? Is it a feeling? How do you experience another human being? Yeah. So when I look at you, whether you're in person or online, or when somebody mentions, uh, say, somebody's name, uh, I get more of a knowing. Uh, so it goes beyond, say, a feeling. I don't channel anything. Uh, and again, that's why it's so very accurate because, well, uh, feelings, being clear, audio, clairvoyant, and so on, or intuition is normally a time-bound issue. Uh, and it depends on, like, if you have a bad day, you're channeling, some, you're channeling something, right? Or you you're, you're rely on your emotions. Well, it, it distorts. Uh, so, but it, we go beyond that. Uh, and it's just a, more of a knowing that we have. So in in my work as a medical intuitive healer, that's known as the gift of clear cognizance, which is psychic knowing. Now, you are the creator of a system called MetaHealing. What is MetaHealing? Right. Uh, A MetaHealing is a process that I take you through. And there's different ways I take you through it. But 
what, what I do is I guide you into a deep state of meditation that actually goes beyond, say, your, your normal meditation uh, or hypnosis or NLP. Uh, and then while you're in that deeper state, uh, I work on helping you reprogram yourself uh, at your source code or or what, again, people might call your spirit level. So you're at a conscious state, uh, awakened at a much deeper state. I work on your spirit level, together we combine, and that's where we really make those, some people might call them magical changes in their any aspect of their life. Now, what are the different ways that people can experience meta-healing? Uh, yes, so there's the 21-day meditations, where you meditate with me for once or twice a day for 21 minutes, really, really powerful. Uh, and this is online uh, via phone or computer. Uh, there's like group healings where you can meditate. Uh, I'll be coming to the UK uh, where we can do like say live events or you know group events where I can work on you on one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, again, the concept is that, that I take you into those deeper states and even if you've had issues meditating or you're not a good meditator, um, I can get you into those deeper states. So how many people are going to be doing meta healing at the same time? How many people log in and join you? Right. It depends. So on the 21 day, which happens every 21 days, uh, every month for 21 days, and then we take a break and then we start over again. Uh, and we've been doing this for the past, like I want to say about six, seven years now, very successful. Uh, and, and the audience has grown. So anywhere from about say 400 to 800 people join us um, live uh, on say normal 21 day, which really creates a lot of momentum, which I call the mastermind. Could, could imagine uh, four to 800 people with the same consciousness of wanting to become abundant, no matter what that abundance might look like to you. We're all going to the same direction and it creates a lot of momentum to break us out of that mold or those repeating you know, patterns that uh, keep affecting our lives daily. Now, what is our source code and how can you see it and how can you empower us to go back to our original soul blueprint? Right. So a source code, I define a source code, uh, and again, many of us might call it your spirit, uh, but I see it as programming. So I see things as just a blueprint, you know, and, you know, we're a ton of like mini miniature programs that operate us, right? We have a program that, for example, your DNA, you know, it, it, the thickness, the curliness of your hair, the color of your hair, that's a program that runs in your DNA. Well, there are other programs that run in you. You know, the happiness that you are, the anxiety that you might have, the depression, the lack of self-worth, the, the abuse pattern that you might run, so on and so on. Uh, those are all literally programs. And this is really important to understand, you know, especially for your audience, is that a lot of people assume that it's their fault that their life is the way it is. But if we understand that we're programs, adopted mostly from say generational patterns right and you can edit those programs and once you edit and change those programs from your source code so your source code is your original blueprint right that dictates how you operate your life you can change that source code and then you can change your life and it's quite quite intense uh and very efficient and very fast but what do you mean by your statement, change your frequency, change your life? Change your frequency, change your life comes about where I got to the point that I understood that everything in this reality, the physical reality or space time, um, is a frequency. For example, uh, and we all resonate, everything resonates at different frequencies, hence it creates a different type of experience for us. For example, you know, if you can hook something up to a machine and they have it, what's called an oscilloscope, you can detect the difference between, uh, say, a metal like gold or like a piece of wood, right? Or like a, a musical tone or a color, right? Everything has a frequency. And if you could read that frequency, you would go, oh, that frequency de uh, de uh, designates uh, the color yellow. 
or the color red, whatever. So I see things, everything in your, say, life that you do or your life experience would be a frequency. If you can just change the modulation of those frequencies, then you become abundant or you resonate. Say, when people say, I resonate with that person, it's just that, you know, you have, if you were two tuning forks, you would be resonating at the same frequency, hence, you know, that's how you resonate together. So again, you change your frequency uh, into, let's say, an abundant state of frequency, and then that's how your life uh, changes. I'm, so the most efficient way to really shift. I'm always telling my clients, you are already a VIP. You're a vibrational interference pattern, right? <laughs> yes. yes, exactly. Yes. Now, what are you, what do you think, what are the frequencies that you think that cause most people to get off track from their original source code? Mm -hmm. You know, it really has to do with um, stepping out of space time. You know, we're all, you know, and, and this is why I say being present and what through the 21 days and whatever else I do with you, you know, the like the industrial group healings and so on like that, is that I pull you into the present moment. So once you get, say, um, in sync with time, your frequencies start to adapt or start to resonate with the abundance of what we call, might call nature, but, you know, the frequencies that create this universe. And if you've noticed nature, it's always abundant. It's always uh, self-fulfilling, right? Uh, there's never really any sort of lack. So I pull you into that present moment state. Uh, and it's more than, say, being conscious or being mindfulness. Again, it's pure, uh, pure awareness. And, and I can pull you into that. And then that's where, uh, you know, frequencies of lack, any type of lack that comes in so so it's really not about it's really not about um, um, to answer the question it, it's about disconnecting ourselves from space and time really and then that's where we have all forms of lack whether it's like self whether it's like abuse patterns or lack of money or lack of in relationships or even that lack of connection to what I call pure source or what you know other people might call God how do your healing methods empower people to overcome loneliness and abuse? <laughs> uh, you can't, yeah, um, I, I kind of broke up uh, loneliness and abuse. How do your healing methods empower people to overcome loneliness and abuse? Yeah, so uh, as a matter of fact, we did uh, an abuse series, which is really intense and really powerful. A lot of people say transform within a very short period of time because you don't have to take 10, 20 years to get over abuse. Um, what I do, again, loneliness and abuse are patterns of being disconnected with between your timeless self, again, spirit, or and your time-bound body. So, and what we're trying to do with loneliness is like, um, you know, that disconnect that we have or that separation feeling that we have with loneliness. It, it, nothing here in the physical realm will help that loneliness. And people have tried, you know, going to parties or getting addicted to things. Uh, abuse is the same thing. It's that separation of your higher self or your spirit level and your physical self. So what I do, again, pull you into the present moment your spirit understands where, say, your body is, uh, pulls it together, and then that's the completeness or the unification that one is looking for. Uh, many of us try to try to say resolve that issue by trying to make a lot of money. And there, by the way, there's nothing wrong with money, uh, or or trying to uh, you know connect with somebody that will make them feel secure. Anything, say, outside of yourself that you try to do to, say, fulfill yourself will never, say, will never complete you. In fact, it'll abuse you. And that's where we get abused by, say, and that's why the good things in your life, say, it might be deemed bad, if that makes sense to you. Because what we're trying to do is fulfill that inner completeness. So I help you feel, fulfill that inner completeness, and then whatever you choose to be abundant with 
uh, whether it's 10,000 a month, a million a month, whatever it is, it fulfills you properly. And you become healthier, wealthier, you know, wiser. And Maz Sajadi, what do you think are the frequencies that hold most people back today that keep us out of being in this present moment and this feeling of connectedness? Right. Um, you know, I think it's always a wanting of something outside of themselves. So, and there's so many different people, you know, there's so many different ways of being disconnected from ourselves. So it's really understanding that the present moment is where you want to be. And again, it's very, very different than say mindfulness and so on. So once you're out of, out of sorts or out of disconnect or, you know, not not complete with nature, then, well, a lot of things can happen. Uh, and most of the time you feel, say, worthless. Uh, you feel like incomplete. Uh, you don't feel like anything is good enough. And then what we try to do, and maybe that, this would answer your question more, so is that we feel all those things, and then what we try to do is to pull ourselves back into time by say trying to create success the proper way or trying to abuse ourselves to pull us back into time or getting us ill because illness always pulls us into time uh, in a dysfunctional way if that makes sense to you yeah so well, i'm sure you yeah so in your view sometimes illness can be a readjustment of our frequency Right, exactly. You're right. You readjust somebody's frequency, and then whatever illness that they have, they can cure themselves. The keyword is that they, uh, I help them awaken, and then they can cure themselves from pretty much anything. Now, you have a very deep understanding of what truly help, heals people. What, Masa Dadi, what do you feel are the underlying principles? that underlie all mm -hmm. true healing experiences? Um, the underlying principle that say helps heal everything is really a true understanding of who you are. You know, when I had that near death experience, you know, there's a, there's a separation of what, how we identify who we are, which is the 1%, or the physical existence of our lives. That's only 1% of who we really are. The 99% uh, is our spirit level. And that is so grand, it's so bountiful. So if you can operate your life from, say, that the 99% and see your 1% life through the 99%, well, you're completely abundant. And how did your own near-death experiences help you shift this perception mm -hmm. the the first near death you know allowed me to see the grandness of who we are so again that was a complete separation you know i saw my physical body again the one percent uh again um and then i saw the grandness of who we are. the second near death uh allowed me to understand the science or the mechanics behind how that all works, how you know the 99% or your spirit level works with your physical form uh, and to integrate that. So I've used it to, well, create a lot of vibrancy in my life, a lot of health, a lot of uh, wealth, a lot of success. Uh, and then also with tens of thousands of people all across the globe uh, creating the same thing for them as well. No matter what we call life, you can always say transform it into a higher form. So even scientists admit that only 4% of the known universe can be quantified or measured in any way. And then 96% of the known universe cannot be measured or quantified. How does your work with meta right. healing help us to connect to this greater awareness? Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. They use 96 and 4%. I use 99 and 1%. <laughs> so, so what my work is, is literally the science of, say, combining the two, say, realities together. And that's what we're all looking for, uh, is an existence of completeness. 
Um, although most of us, again, go the wrong way and think, you know, more money is going to complete us or a specific person is going to complete. It never does. That completeness that you're looking for, that connection between, you know, your 1%, 99% and that integration. So if you want to say boil it down, I'm literally an integrator of the two. And that's where, you know, again, amazing transformations come about for people. Now, in your meta healing programs, which again, you, you, people can experience either live in person with you or over the internet in a 21 day healing program, what are the stages of your healing that you take people through? Um, in the 21 days, uh, again, where you meditate with me either once if you're a new person or you're really sensitive to transformations, because it is pretty, it does get pretty extent. Uh, pretty intense as far as the changes go or you can do the accelerated version twice a day again to, to increase that intensity if you're really gung-ho uh, the first it's 21 days for about 21 22 minutes a day uh, the first third of that is to really understand all the frequencies that you're running that you're not so this is all the habits, all the garbage that we've brought about from generational patterns. So it's literally, you know, cleaning out your foundation that you think life is about. Okay? The, the second third would be about, um, the second third would be about, you know, constructing a solid, more complete foundation, more timeless foundation to build upon. And then the, the last third would be, would be bringing in frequencies of like true wealth, what say the higher version of what wealth is, the higher version of what health is, um, uh, that connection to a higher source. Uh, I call it pure source. You might call it God or, you know, and again, it's, this isn't about um, changing your value system, changing your belief system, anything like that. It's really about understanding your value system, your belief system at a higher level so it benefits you rather than destroying you. Now, in addition to being the founder of Meta Healing, you're also the founder of Exponential Intelligence. What exactly is Exponential mm -hmm. Intelligence? Uh, exponential Intelligence is a body of knowledge that I tap, tapped into after my second near death. I mean, we all run from some sort of, or some form of Exponential Intelligence. Uh, again, it's a body of, timeless knowledge that operates it's like a human handbook or how this reality works in this space time um again i didn't create it it's a timeless knowledge it's been around since the beginning of time it'll be here since the end of time if we understand say this that science of it uh our life will be say abundant i've just learned to tap into it at a much much higher level than most people and i show how uh how to tap into it at that same level uh, without having the near death. Sweetheart, it's... I know, yeah. I have to ask you Okay. So we've got a few more minutes. Then. Yes. And what exactly is metamorphosis? You've also, you're also the founder of metamorphosis. So, so metamorphosis is really a cool concept because, you know, as I worked on, gosh, like I said, over tens of thousands all across the world, you know, it's not, and this is why it's so very different when I do, it's not like trying to adapt or, you know, trying to, um, well, most modalities, even like Western medicine or Eastern philosophies, what happens is that, you know, we try to bury what we've gone through, right? Or the abuse patterns, the illness patterns or whatever has destroyed us, right? We try to bury it or we try to create a, uh, you know, a program or a belief system that circumvents it, but it still exists. So when people go through the process of, you know, exponential intelligence, it's almost like they have a new identity that comes about. So a lot of our newer programs, again, which is have more intensity of transformation in a shorter period of time, uh, is called a metamorphosis, where it literally changes, say, your almost like your, how you see yourself, uh, how you see your life and how you see yourself. So it's like a total change, hence metamorphosis. It's, it's, it's a state of change from one aspect into a completely different aspect. 
that makes sense to you. And that's how much of an intense change it is from say when you start with me and then after you go through the program, it's a complete, uh, well, metamorphosis. Now, Ma Sajadi, do you feel there's an emotional component to our health? And if so, how can we recalibrate our emotions mm -hmm. so that we're experiencing optimal health? Right, there is an emotional component to health, um, you know, but exponential intelligence would go even deeper. It's like, well, what is causing those emotions? Well, uh, I, 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 I see that emotions are actually, say, tools to, to allow the programs that you're running to become true. So most individuals, you know, their emotions aren't really calibrated properly. I mean, look, you follow your emotions, you know, you follow your gut feeling, and then you run into an abusive relationship. Does that make sense? Why would that happen? So, so what I say is always say, understand your emotions. Why did your emotions get you into the situation that it did? And then that's where we start to awaken and we go, oh, wow you know, there's a set of programs that's running or like patterns that are running. And that's really key. Once you say, understand the patterns, you can, you can shift those patterns and then your emotions will say, calib be calibrated, right? And they'll take you towards the proper direction, you know, into healthier relationships or more abundance or whatever else that you need to become, you know, successful. Now, science has proven that meditation has numerous benefits to our health. You're the founder mm -hmm. of Meta Healing. Yes. What's, how is that different from meditation or mindfulness? So it's just an, it's more of a potent or an extreme version. And most meditations, you know, Catherine, what happened is that, you know, they tend to say disconnect us. It's almost like a hypnosis, you know, where we say, start to move out of our bodies and go somewhere else, if that makes sense, right? Especially uh, transcendental meditation, hence you transcend into some other space. What I do is more, um, more natural. It's, it's literally pulling your spirit in and around you. So for example, if you go to nature, does that make sense? You don't lose yourself somewhere. You become so present, it becomes awe-inspiring. And that's why if you go out to raw nature and you see it, it's amazing and it's beautiful and it's relaxing because what does it do? It forces you to become present. It forces you to become who you really are, right? Without the distortions, the self-image issues, all those things. And then you can overcome those. So for me, what I do is I get you into that say present state just like nature does uh but more even more potent than that in a very short time uh, a lot of times within just say a minute or so um and then once you're at that level you get to see again it's like gosh all these troubles this illness and so on it's not me it's not my natural state to be and well just like you that's how people shift right Absolutely. Now, do you feel that there's a role of allopathic medicine compared to natural healing? Um, so when you talk about allopathic, you're talking about like Western medicine, yeah. so on? Western yeah. medicine. Of course. Yeah. Right. Um, right. It, to me, I'm not against anything. I'm not for anything as long as it's beneficial for you. Okay. Uh, you know, if you get into an accident, uh, allopathic type medicines or surgeries and so on are beneficial. But, you know, to really cure somebody, uh, to really cure somebody, your internal healing abilities have to be turned on. Right? If, it, if that's not turned on, no matter what you do, no matter what you go through, no matter who you see, it won't, it won't cure you, it won't heal you. Uh, in any way. So what I do is help you awaken your internal healing abilities. And then once that is awakened, whether you go to, you know, a Western type medicine um, or, you know, Eastern philosophies or energy medicines or chiropractors, whatever it is, um, it'll actually say function for you. So you don't have to keep going over and over again. Unfortunately, you know, Western medicine, uh, it, it's more of a business now than actually helping people.
So that's the one negative that I see. But in its truer sense, yes, there are benefits to all sorts of modalities and all sorts of religions, by the way. Masajidi, what are your thoughts on autoimmune disease? Do you actually see the body actually attacking itself or is there some other program or frequency going on? You know, I actually was at a conference on autoimmune um, and time after time, because um, it was about a room of about 200 people that I spoke at, I was the only, you say, non-MD in the room speaking, so it was, uh, it, it was, it was quite an honor. Uh, and it was interesting, and I brought people up on stage, and, you know, I showed, uh, you know, the doctors and everybody else that, you know, um, 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 is that the, the disease or the issue that they have is really a space-time dysfunction. They really start, they really don't understand, you know, how their body is created in this space-time. And I know that sounds kind of strange, but, you know, if you think about it, our body is an electrical mechanism. Does that make sense to you? And if you're disconnected and if you're not exactly sure where or how your spirit is creating your body, then that's where we get the distortions and some of the diseases associated with that. So, so in that seminar, literally I pulled people into, into their bodies, so to speak. Uh, and again, we don't have time to explain what that means, but pulling this into say a true identity of where they are created, so to speak, uh, or a completeness. Um, and right then and there for a good number of them, they felt clearer than ever uh, with that very minimal symptoms. And it only took to say just a few minutes. Again, I'm not saying I cure anybody or anything like that, but you know, you awaken them and they get to understand how to cure themselves. And what do you see as the underlying basis for these autoimmune diseases? Um, autoimmune, again, it's a disconnect from your identity. So. I see your nervous system because autoimmune is literally uh, a disconnect or, or a misunderstanding or a mis, mis, um, miscalibration of your nervous system. Uh, and then from there, it turns into, say, some form of autoimmune issues. So if you can reconnect yourself. So I see autoimmune more of a, like an electrical connection or electrical dysfunction within your system, that creates, again, autoimmune and so on, uh, rather than uh, the Western philosophy of what they think autoimmune is about. And I've, pro and I've proven it, and again, I don't say I cure anybody, but people who had autoimmune, you know, uh, I help them connect to their truer self, you know, their nervous system reconnects, and they can overcome or compensate better with their issues that they have. Now, our audience here at the Natural Healing Show are people who are pretty self-actualized and they want to learn about everything they can do to help themselves. Masa Jadi, uh, right. what do you feel that people can do to help heal themselves? The, the number one thing that we can do is, is really to become aware of their actions. So this goes beyond mindfulness. So, so what that means is that, you know, instead of being mindful or basically how you thought, how you think, because how you think is a filter, you know, but if we can understand, say, the actions of our bodies. So like, um, you know, the way your hands move or the way you walk, you know, most people don't even acknowledge that. And, you know, they might be 40, 50, you know, 60 years old, and they haven't really analyzed how they walk or how they hold things. So it's all about, say, connecting back into the body and really studying it. So if you're washing dishes, notice, say, the water on your hand rather than thinking elsewhere. Um, and this, again, this is why it goes beyond mindfulness because you start to understand the mechanics or how your body integrates with space-time or the physical space here. Once you understand that, it's like an aha moment because that's where your, if you want, your spirit comes or your higher self comes into you and then and that and then your spirit comes in it rejoices literally that's how you feel great and then that's where you cure yourself of, and heal yourself of any sort of lack and it sounds kind of strange but uh again for for your audience 
you know, this goes beyond mindfulness, wellness, or searching outside of yourself. And then what happens is that you will start to attract whatever you need to pull that, you know, to pull more abundance into you. Again, whether it's a uh, uh, herb or anything else, or meditation or oils or whatever else that you need, right, will come into you. Now, you okay. developed unique abilities after your two near death experiences. Can you explain for our audience some of the unique abilities that you developed? Um, yeah, so I can, some of the abilities that I've developed. Uh, and then I'm sorry, we have to end, uh, is that, well, I can tap into you and get to within say seconds, literally, or maybe even less, get to the core level issue of why your life is the way it is. Okay. Cause most individuals will come go, you know, Moss, I have, I don't know, uh, I have abusive relationships and they don't know why. Right. Or, you know, they have money issues or they have some physical ailment because a lot of times now. Uh, that I'm getting more well known. You know, some doctors will send uh, their clients to me, or you know, people that are fed up or can't figure anything out. It's like, and, and I get to the core level issues. I go, well, this is why that's happening. So it's, it's not only about understanding your core level issue, but it's helping you say remove that core level issue. And then again, you start uh, uh, resonating at a different frequency, and then you start changing, or you start attracting something that'll help you change. Okay. Um, Catherine, I have to get on another call. So yes. if, you, if we can. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we've had the blessing of listening to Maz Sajadi. Maz is the founder of Exponential Intelligence, Metamorphosis, and Meta Healing. You can find out more about his work at mazsajadi.com. This is Catherine Kirigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author and host of The Natural Healing Show. And remember, when you bring your energy into the present moment, you access and remember who you really are. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.